Hey, it's Brian. And in this podcast, we are going to answer some community questions. And there are some juicy ones. I don't want to add any more fluff. We're just going to jump right into the first question. And this one is definitely um, a spicy question. And I, I hear this all the time, basically talking about narcissism. So Noel in the community, in the awakening community says, how do I begin to heal from the narc, the narcissist and move on for good? How do I start with healing my childhood to ensure I stay away even though we have a child? Okay. So I just want to clarify some nuances here, but I think that the, the core of it is going to be applicable to everybody. Uh, I'm not really sure if uh, it sounds like they're breaking up and she wants to stay broken up, but they have a child. So I imagine she's worried about the child that they share together, causing some issues in terms of luring her back into the relationship, right? So either way, she wants to heal from the narc. And I would say that we need to reshape that question completely. And that's what you hear so much out there is how do I heal from narcissistic abuse? How do I avoid narcissists and so on and so forth? Well, you have to start avoiding yourself. You have to start avoiding the pain and the fear inside you that made you attracted to a narcissist or a person that has narcissistic traits and whatever fears and insecurities that kept you in that type of relationship. Because all relationships are simply a mirror reflection of yourself. In fact, this is not something that most people like to hear is that people that are in relationship with quote unquote narcissists, they also have narcissism in them. In fact, you know, I imagine that typical narcissist is controlling, dominating, um, and they'll use tactics like manipulation, gaslighting, and things that kind of maintain that control, right? But it comes from a place of insecurity. That insecurity is actually shared by both people in the relationship. Even the person that's the people pleasing, the empath, the, the codependent, whatever you want to call it, has the same insecurity. They just have a different way of coping with that insecurity, right? The narcissist copes with that insecurity by being controlling dominating, right? All these different, you know, quote unquote abusive behaviors. It's just trying to be in control so that they don't have to be in a vulnerable state of insecurity, which is low self-worth fundamentally, right? Or abandonment usually is a combination of both, right? A deep fear of abandonment and self-worth stuff. That's actually a core wound that's, that's shared by both people. It's just that the people pleaser or the codependent empath, whatever, copes with that pain by being codependent, by being a people pleaser, by abandoning themselves over and over again, enabling toxic behavior. They're not doing that because they are, uh, you know, oh, woe is me, I'm a victim and I'm a saint and I'm such a good person that is at the mercy of this big bad wolf narcissist. They're doing that because they're actually trying to soothe and cope with a core pain of low self-worth or fear of abandonment or whatever that is. They're trying to cope with that by doing those behaviors. It is self-serving to be people pleasing, believe it or not. They're actually getting something out of it, which is connection. Even though it's a toxic connection, it's unhealthy, abusive, whatever it is, they are still getting a connection. That's why it's so hard to leave. So if I want to make this short and simple for you, if you do not want to repeat this cycle, an abusive, toxic relationship cycle with someone who's narcissistic, you have to meet that narcissism inside yourself and the core wound that created that. That means the core wound of abandonment. You have to face that pain inside you that has been inside you before the narcissist. It's hard to hear. I know it is because I've been the one that I could tell people if, if, if I were to follow this narrative, I could say I'm, I'm a victim of narcissism as well, right? But that, that goes way beyond, way back in time beyond this relationship. This happened when I was a child growing up with a narcissistic parent and all the abuse that happened be because of that. I have to go back into my timeline and meet my wounds and where they originated from growing up. Because if you make it all about the person that you're dating now or you're married to now, or maybe the past relationship, you're going to be trapped in that cycle. You have to get to the root of it. You have to get to the root of it. If you do not heal at the root level, you're just going to keep spinning your wheels and repeating the same cycle in the next relationship and the next relationship and the next right? So basically you have to heal the, that trauma inside you because you have a deep wound of low self-worth, fear of abandonment, and so on that the narcissist did not give you. Yes, they are provoking it, they are triggering it, but they did not give you that wound. That's a wound that you've been holding inside you since childhood. It's a childhood wound. And this is not to be harsh, it's trying to give you the powers and tools to actually change your life because if you heal at the root level, then you will not be attracted to a narcissist. You will not be attracted to any type of relationship that's that's like that, right? You can transcend it. But if you do not heal yourself, do the inner work as opposed to the blame game, then you're just going to repeat the cycle again. 
right? So, you know, what's that healing work going to look like? Somatic work, connecting to your nervous system. The traumas are felt in the body. Inner child work, again, reflecting on your timeline, meeting that hurt little boy or little girl that's still inside you and reshaping and reparenting that relationship. It's going to look like breath work, connecting with your breath, building the relationship with your breath. All this and more I cover in my, my coaching, but, you know, these are a handful of the tools that get you to heal your core trauma. Again, the key thing here is that you want to realize that your insecurities, your wounds, it's an echo. It's a repeating pattern that's been happening throughout your life. It did not start and it will not stop with the so-called narcissist. You have to do the inner work. And that is how you begin to heal and stay away from narcissists is that you got to change yourself, not constantly running away. All right. That was a great one. I had, I had a lot to say about that one. Let's move on to the next question here. Angel in the awakening community asks how to heal and recover from betrayal trauma from infidelity and also transition my life and letting go of the life i envisioned while now going through a divorce all right i guess i'll kind of rephrase it to make it straight to the point how do you heal and recover from betrayal and build a new life right how do you transition out of that and building a new life and looks like the you know, he's going through a divorce and, and, and so on. The betrayal is a symptom of deeper rooted issues. You know, it, it is both coming together to create a betrayal. The thing is that most people see a betrayal as this person did this to me and I'm innocent and I'm the victim. A betrayal is a symptom of the relationship breaking down where one person is not getting their needs and that's their issue of not expressing that, right? They have a trauma of avoiding expressing that. And so they run off to somebody else, right? They try to get their needs somewhere else, right? But that doesn't make it right. But it's a symptom of what's happening in the relationship because I guarantee you there were lots of issues in the relationship that were leading up well before that betrayal happened, right? Well before the cheating happened. Issues that you brought to the table and issues that they brought to the table, inability to be vulnerable and to be able to see each other's side. And so there's just a rift that gets created. And unfortunately, some people deal with that rift by distracting themselves with another person, unfortunately. That can look like anything. It doesn't always have to be another person. Sometimes they avoid by distracting themselves with work, friends, social media, entertainment, working out, all kinds of ways that people try to unplug and disconnect and run away. Right. So, I mean, obviously that was, you know, his partner that did that, but two sides of the same coin. If you really want to recover from betrayal trauma, you have to see and acknowledge what you added into that. It's co-created. Yes, they brought their bag of crap, of course, and that hurts. That doesn't make it right. But you also brought your bag of crap to it as well to create that betrayal. Again, that's really hard to hear. You'll notice a theme here is that there's a lot of accountability and trying to not get into that victim blame spiral because that does not change your life. That just recreates your trauma, that recreates your suffering in the next relationship and the next. Furthermore, let's go deeper into it, the betrayal trauma. What's the pain that the betrayal is creating inside you? Maybe it's a pain of abandonment. Maybe it's a pain of being disappointed by somebody. Maybe it's the pain of not being able to trust someone says something, uh, but they, they they do something else, right? There's a pain there. You want to meet that pain. You want to disconnect from trying to figure that person out and make it about that person. You want to connect to what is the pain that is being lit up inside you. And then you want to connect to where you felt that pain before. And if you spend enough time exploring this and asking yourself this question and be really honest with yourself, you'll see that this pain has been there long before this betrayal. It's been there since childhood, right? Bring you right back to childhood. You know, maybe there are people that let you down as a child. Maybe there are people that lied. Maybe there are people that disappointed you as a child. And maybe that disappointment created a sense of abandonment, right? You want to see what that cycle is and, and process that emotionally because that's where the work is going to be. Again, you're going to follow the steps, the somatic work, the inner child work, the breath work, and definitely processing that in a support structure is going to be how you work through that. And then I guess the last bit is how can I let go of the life I envisioned while now going through a divorce? And what I would say to that is to realize that the life you envisioned was based off of insecurities, lies, expectations, demands. It had a weak foundation. And so we can see where that foundation was built off of. It becomes very easy to begin letting go of that. That never was built on something strong where you were both being fully authentic, but also giving space for the other person to be authentic with you. If you don't have that, then whatever life that you are envisioning that you're trying to build for yourself is built on very shaky legs that can collapse very easily. And so to realize that the, the illusion of that vision will help dispel it. And that really, this gives you a, an opportunity right now to build a life that is more authentic, that is more real. That when you have a new 
and that the next partner that comes into your life is to really give them space to be authentic as opposed to coming to, into that relationship with so much of your expectations of how you want it to go and what you want out of the relationship. But go into that relationship instead being very curious, very open, and very understanding of what they want, not just what you want, right? So that there's space for both of you to be authentic. It's going to take courage. And that way you can have a real understanding of what that life can be like moving forward and what you can build moving forward. Again, you have to do the trauma work though, because to be able to get to that level of really spiritual partnership where there is that freedom and safety for you both to be authentic with who you are and what you want, it requires healing a lot of the wounds that block it, the fear of abandonment, the fear of not being enough, the fear of all these, all these different fears will put you in a state of demands, expectations of the other person, which doesn't give them the space to be authentic. And so that I would say would be a huge thing to, to try to shift into. Great. Let's move on. All right. Joe in the community asks, how do I pinpoint what, when, and who caused my trauma? Who caused my trauma that does not allow me to trust, accept love, and feel that I need to push people away, right? So Joe has a trauma of trust, a trust wound, where I imagine growing up, he was massively disappointed by the people closest to him because that disappointment was so painful. Maybe it felt like abandonment or you know something like that. He doesn't want to feel that again, ever again. And so he wants to push people away where you have to understand why you push people away because you're trying to avoid that pain. And so the tricky thing that people can fall into the trap of is that I want to be able to do a better job holding someone to a certain really almost impossible standard that they can never disappoint me. I want to learn to find the right people that I can trust so they'll never disappoint me. That still comes from a trauma. That still comes from avoiding pain and fear. And that will keep you. The paradox of that is the more you try to manage and control the environment or, you know, filter through people so that, you know, you're basically trying to like not feel that pain of disappointment, right? Maybe it's a pain of abandonment, whatever that is. You're trying to not feel that pain. The, the desire to not feel that pain is actually what attracts you to the very people that provoke that pain. In other words, the act of trying to prevent that pain, run away from that pain is actually what creates, recreates that for you again and again. And we do it subconsciously. And so you want to confront that pain fully and stop trying to run away from it. How does it feel when someone breaks your trust and disappoints you completely? Maybe you feel completely confused, lost, abandoned, unworthy, hurt, you know, hurt in some way. What is that pain? And can you allow yourself to feel that pain? And can you let the pain of that wound guide you into a deeper connection to yourself and to the healing journey, right? And it brings you right back to the SIBS process that I teach clients and I coach people through, which is the somatic work, the inner child work, the breath work, and so on. Let that pain bring you into that work so you can heal. Now, there's a one component to this is how do I pinpoint who caused the trauma? The answer is into what I just said earlier, is you want to get really present with the pain. You want to feel it. Sounds counterintuitive, but you want to feel the pain of abandonment or the pain of being unworthy and rejected. Whatever that pain is, you want to be present with it and let it come up inside you. And the more present that you can be with that, connected to those feelings, you will be able to better connect to the origin of it. And one prompt that you can do is that when you're connecting to the feeling, is to ask yourself, when have I felt any of this growing up as a child? What was it like around mom or dad or your siblings, or maybe there's other family members Right? What was it like in, in your family? And then explore it, see what comes up. But you have to connect to the pain. You can't just skip steps and make it a cognitive exercise. You want to get in to the felt sensation of the pain first. That opens the gateway to making that deeper connection, which then allows you to do inner child work, some mad work, and so on. Right. So the first thing I would say is like really start to feel your feelings. Allow yourself to connect. Not not to the story of who did what to you. You know, that might be able to bring up the feelings, but once those feelings are brought up, you want to stay present with those feelings first. You know, that might take one or two minutes and that will allow you to bridge over to who caused your trauma. And then you can start to reshape that over time. All right, we are on a roll here. Let's do one more. Jennifer asks how to learn to completely trust and know myself when most of my life has been ensuring others are happy and cared for and not myself, right? So there's a self-abandonment instead of self-love. So you want to get to the root of this. There's a reason why you are ensuring that other people are happy, why you're always caretaking for other people and making sure other people are okay at the expense of yourself. There's a reason why you're doing that. And now one exercise that you can do is imagine those situations or even situations right now, because it's probably happening right now still, right? Putting other people before you. What if you were to not do that? How would that feel if I were not trying to make them happy, to fix things, to caretake for them, right? If I'm not always on top of their needs, 
if I pulled back, how would I feel? And that right there is going to uncover a lot. Well, I feel like maybe that I won't be needed. I will feel maybe I'm abandoned. Maybe I, I won't be loved or needed and I will, I will lose connection. And that wound right there, as you work with that, that will then help you learn to trust yourself and know yourself more, right? And that's part of knowing yourself is what is actually motivating you to do the things that hurt you. Because oftentimes we will endure some pain to prevent a bigger pain. Listen to that right there. We will endure a pain, which here is like abandoning herself, right? To avoid a bigger pain of being abandoned by somebody else. Being abandoned by someone else is more painful than abandoning yourself. And that's the pain you want to connect with. You start to work with that pain, you use the same techniques, then you will naturally stop putting other people in front of you. You will, you will stop abandoning yourself. And then you'll, and, and basically all of that is you learning to know yourself more and you learning to trust yourself that you're going to be okay if you don't do those behaviors, right? But it starts with meeting that hurt part, that core wound first. All right. We made some great discussions already. I'm going to wrap up that podcast. I will say this, that if you are ready to do some deep inner work, to meet those scared, hurt parts inside you that are creating those um, behaviors of people pleasing, codependency, abandoning yourself, being attracted to toxic relationships and narcissism, I would invite you to definitely check out my program, Self Mastery University. You can find out more about that at awakeningwithbrian.com slash group, right? Awakeningwithbrian.com slash group. There will also be links in the description as well. Anyways, stay tuned for the next episodes where I answer questions like this and also interview other guests on the show. Make sure to follow me or subscribe for more content.